So what I've done, I've taken the end that was cut with a pair of side cutters or pliers and cut it with a hacksaw, making the end circular. So we've got a round end in which to work for. We're gonna need that if we're using the joy stripper or using the rotary stripper. It wouldn't have mattered on the key stripper, but for those two stripping tools, we're gonna need a round end. I'm gonna to need to take my knife and I'm gonna to need to remove some of this PVC in order to show you the technique to remove the outer copper. So we're gonna do so like that, nice and firm with our knife, all the way around, and hopefully we'll be able to just whip that off like so. And now we've revealed the copper on the outside. We could just have bare MI, so in no PVC sheathing, we could have bare. Be careful though, if you've got bare copper MI, you cannot install it on cable tray because there will be an electrolytic reaction between the copper and the actual tray itself and it will eat through it and you'll find a pool of um, magnesium oxide on the floor where it's eaten through the two. So exam question would be, you'd need it to be PVC insulated where on cable tray or the tray itself be PVC insulated. They used to do a PVC insulated tray as well. So we're in that position there. If we were terminating the end, which this video is not about, it's about the stripping technique. If you were terminating the end, we'd need the shroud, etc., to go on and parts of the gland. We're just gonna work out how to get the outer copper off to expose the conductors in this video. It has two conductors in it. So we've got two conductors, so we're gonna be effectively got a line and neutral. The outside part here will provide our protective conductor and is a massive amount of copper. So it would make a fantastic CPC. The construction of the conductors in mineral insulated, they are always solid, so we have no stranded. So this is two core, 1.5, and the actual cladding on the outside of the MI is light gauge. So when we look at gland bodies and pots, we will see things like two, two core, L, light gauge, and 1.5. The white powder in there is magnesium oxide, it's hygroscopic, in other words, it draws moisture from the air into it. So when we start working on it, we should look to make off the end at the time we're working on it. So we wouldn't want to go away and leave it when stripped back, exposed for an extended period of time because it will draw moisture out the air. However, I'm probably gonna get it wrong. However, it will only draw moisture out the environment uh, for about 85 mil. So about eight and a half centimeters, it saturates out. It won't continue to pull it all the way through. So once you've cut an end off and you've made an end off, you will have removed the moisture that it draws in. We're going to look at stripping this back. The technique is going to be using this, first of all, the actual joy stripper. Joy stripper is great, everyone loves them. Unfortunately, the blades often get blunt. The blades often, if you rotate it the wrong way, will snap and become difficult to strip. You won't be able to see it very easily, but on the outside barrel, in relationship to the holes that are here is the number of conductors and the size of those conductors. So we've got things like 3L1. So that hole there would be for three core, one mil light gauge. We've got it already set on ours, which is 2L1.5. Okay, and we're ready to go. We're hoping the blade is in the right position when we start. If not, there'll be a dissolve through as Gaz comes back again and hopefully gets it right at the second attempt. So that's set up and ready to go. Important that we, we uh, have a practice go first in order to get a blade in the right position. If not, we have to adjust it. I recommend you ask your college lecturer to help you adjust your blade and never rotate it back the wrong way when it gets jammed because you will snap the blade itself. The trick is to make sure when you're stripping it back that you use a petroleum jelly. So in other words, that's probably in there a make of, let's go with Vaseline. So this is a small discreet lubricant that you can carry about yourself in your pocket and the gentleman in front of me are now smiling uh, vigorously. So that's just a little bit of Vaseline. So your little personal lubrication might be that your lips are a little dry and want to moisten them up. Okay, so we're gonna take a little bit of this. Freddie, hold it together. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take a little bit of that and we're gonna run it down the side of it, just down one side. We don't need to lubricate the whole thing on the way down. We're happy just to lubricate one side, okay, as we go down. Remember, we're not putting any of the, the paraphernalia on for the gland. I'm just showing the techniques to strip it at the moment. We're then gonna fold it in half, depending on how far we're gonna come down. We're just going with the technique at the minute. There is a bin underneath me and I am in a classroom. So there will be a lot of the white magnesium oxide coming out when I'm doing this. So just so I've got a better grip and I've got my stripper there and we're going to the, hopefully the appropriate hole like so. And hopefully if the blade's set up correctly, it won't dig into the conductors, it'll just score the outside copper cladding. So, a little bit of pressure on it, like so. 
and you can already see that we're underway stripping back the outside clad in itself. Sometimes it's easier to use a pair of pliers. So if I hold it here with a pair of pliers rather than my hand, I've got something to work down towards, like so. And we go down the actual cable itself. It's important to try and keep the conductors as straight as you possibly can. Strip off any excess as it gets a little bit long. Drop into the bin and we go again. So we go down, hold it on nice and firmly. What tends to happen is students tend to bend all the conductors and making the process that won't be shown in this video, but in a later video, a little bit more difficult. Drop those in there and we go again. So there's nothing difficult about this. People who are watching this now are thinking, oh gosh, you made up, this is gonna be a disaster. You know, pretty difficult. It's not difficult at all if your kit's set up correctly. Snip it off again. It doesn't matter at the moment. This is just a video to show you the techniques to get off the cladding. Okay, so we're gonna come down. When we wanna stop it, uh, unless I'm terminating that into a matchbox, that's not going to be long enough. We're gonna to need to make sure it's longer than the accessories. We always do with the rules with the PVC cables, maybe a box or half a box longer than what we need it to be. But at the minute, we're gonna just end it there. So I'm gonna hold my pliers in the finishing position. Another clip there. Okay. And we go again. And then when I get to the point of which I want to stop it, just make sure your pliers are squared on and in position and you roll it against those pliers. And you can see it breaks off. And then we just gently remove that, like so. So there we go, we've stripped it back. You notice that my conductors are absolutely dead straight. What's the chances of everybody else's conductors being dead straight? Well, that's a million dollar question and we'll find out in a few moments. And we're ready to go. There's some excess magnesium oxide here, the insulator. We said it was hygroscopic, so we probably don't want to blow into it because we could end up putting spittle in there. So you end up spitting in there and there's a bit of moisture. That moisture will track between either the two live conductors or the live conductors to the outside, which will be our CPC. So we generally like to just clear it off like so. So there's a little bit more tap in there in order to clear that off. And again, we would be putting the rest of the gland on, etc. But at the moment, it's just how do we get off the outside copper? So we used in first case, the joy stripper in order to strip it back. So for the people behind the camera and everybody watching at home, I hope this video has been some help.